Shalom and welcome to It's All About the Aliyah. We're going to continue with part two of our conversation with Nassan Shulman. Uh, we have been talking about his personal journey and, and uh, uh, experiences having made Aliyah and now living in Israel. Nassan, welcome back. Thanks for having me again. It's all, all, every time I come back, I have a lot of fun. Oh, I, I enjoy it. Uh, you bring such a, a, a perspective, a, an enjoyable perspective. Um, your story is is a positive one, and uh, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, I mentioned in our last program that uh, the number one question we are asked as speakers when we go out to to basically raise funds to help uh, the the uh, the impoverished Jewish people that we do help make Aliyah. Uh, the question that we get often is. What happens when they get to the land of Israel? And you have been sharing uh, a lot about that. Um, and, and, and I do so much appreciate that. And another, another uh, thing that, they, that Olim mentioned all the time is, why, you know, why are you going to Israel? Well, many will mention that they want to reconnect with their, their Jewish roots. Some will mention that they want to give a greater opportunity for their children. And, and uh, they talk about jobs. And often they talk about health care. Because the healthcare is so poor in some of the countries that they're they're coming from, uh, can you shed some light for our audience about that? What you've experienced since you've been in Israel regarding that? Healthcare system here is excellent. It's uh, it's it, but from many points of view. First of all, it's um, it's not expensive here. Now, by the way, free doesn't mean doesn't mean it's good healthcare. You, I mean, North Korea has free healthcare, yeah. um, but but you have the best of everything. First of all, it's it's public. It's 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 you can even call it socialized. But there are four competing systems that compete to get you into their system. There are four competing systems. So there's four a four tiered healthcare system. It's all public, and I mean they fight tooth and nail to make sure that you're going to join them. So they by law they have to give a certain amount of of, of goodies, right? A certain amount of, for example, if a woman's pregnant, a certain amount of um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, sonograms theory. or whatever you call um, okay. those kinds of things. Sorry, I, I can't remember the name. But um, everyone's going to give you a lot more. Why? Because they want your business. So even though it's a public system, it's very cutthroat, competitive, and mm. and they, 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 we get calls all the time saying, "You want to come to join us? If you come join us, we'll give you this." So it's it's a very good system. I mean, I grew up in Canada where we had free health care, but I mean, the lines are very long. I've heard that. Uh, yes. My daughter was born at, my youngest one was born at 25 and a half weeks. So mm -hmm. six, less than six months. So we're talking about an age where it's miraculous and she's growing great. But uh -huh. uh, I don't know if outside of Israel this would have happened. It, I, I, I have no proof to this, but I, I'm not sure that in Canada she would have survived. I mean, even in a first world country, let alone a place, let's say, like the Russia or, and, and the Ukraine. So this healthcare system has been very good. And um, uh, it's definitely been one of the pluses here. And it's been, you know, uh, it's been working for us very well. Well, that's that's very good to hear because I think those expectations are there of the Olim that we're helping, and it's good to hear that that uh, that's they're going to be their experience and has been their experience when they get to to Israel. Um, the other thing I mentioned, obviously, is jobs, finding jobs, because many, uh, most of the people we help are poor, and uh, they're looking to find better opportunities. Uh, maybe you could share a little bit about your experience, maybe your expectations, maybe what you had to do when you first got to the land versus where you are today. Uh, share a little bit about your job experience. So I was learning in yeshiva, sort of bringing a little extra income. My first job was on Fridays, handing out flyers at the local store for someone. <laughs> yeah, I was making like 30 shekels an hour. Um, I mean, I, I was doing it with purpose, so I did it very well. Um, and I, by the way, I, I always say you have to do an honest job. I was, I did. What kind of skills does it take to hand out flyers? But I did it so well that I was even able to ask for a raise within a month. Um, <laughs> but that was my first job. Was was it enjoyable? Not not in the least bit. But it was, um, you know, it, 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 the type of job that I wanted. It allowed me to continue to learn in yeshiva for longer. Good. Later on, I started moving into. Uh, there, there's this company that every Ole should know about. There's a site called Django.com where they have jobs that are advertised mostly in English, but sometimes you'll see jobs that are like, you also need to know Spanish, you need to know Russian, or there's different types of jobs, some of them better than others. Um, 
But my second job, above the, which I found through that, was tutoring an older man in Torah studies. Uh, I would go. It was an hour a day, but it was something. And um, my next job afterwards was a working as a caregiver for a 97 year old man. Unfortunately, at the time he had um, he had Alzheimer's. He's since passed away, long passed away. But um, I mean, she, I was uh, out at university and stuff, and I was changing his diapers, for example. But it, again, one thing that kept me going was I'm living in Israel. I'm living. I'm, it, it kept me going, and um, so again, I did it with purpose. Um, those are the type, but those are the types of jobs. Again, I found them also through online. Yeah. Um, later on, I got a job in customer service that I, that was a better job, and eventually, uh, I, I finished my tour guiding collect because I was doing this as I was doing my tour guiding course. And then I started doing well in that, and um, and since then I haven't uh, I haven't looked back. But it was definitely it was definitely a learning experience and having to not have an ego, right? I right. can come up and say, "Listen, I come from a, I come from a, a good family. I come from, I, 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 I had a top degree and everything and stuff. And yet here I am, and I'm, I'm changing diapers of an old man. But that's what you got to do. That's what uh, you got to do. What you got to do. And that's something that all in that come in, you have to be willing to take do do what it takes. And you're not going to be doing it forever. I'm sure not. But you have to also come in without the ego. You have to be able to come in and say." Uh, if I want to live in Israel, it's important. I'll take the job and, uh, you know, I'll work on it and I'll get something better later. Well, I very much appreciate that. I mean, you know, I know that that has been the attitude of my wife and I, our lives, uh, you know, as when we were younger and, and money was tight, uh, you do what you what it takes to get to get through and then you work your way uh, to a better position. Um, and I think that, you know, the Olim that we work with, they're coming from more of a desperate situation. So I believe they, they, they would have that appreciation for the opportunities that they'll have in Israel and for just being in Israel uh, and fulfilling uh, that, that dream. Um, all right, also, well, you mentioned, by the way, with Russians, for example, a lot of them work in, um, if you go to any government office, let's say, in uh, the national insurance or anything, you can assume that the person is a good chance, is a very high chance that the person there is is, is Russian. Uh, so, in terms of a Russian only in that come here, they seem to uh, they they adapt very well, very quickly, and they um, and it, it seems that they do very well. A lot of them at government jobs, and um, so what I was describing was more Americans, but uh, it's, it seems that Russians integrate much quicker and therefore are able to get jobs. The, um, better jobs quicker. Well, that's good. That's very good to know. Uh, we're going to talk on the other side of the break. Let's talk about the organizations uh, that exist in Israel that might be there to to help people find work. Uh, we'll we'll take this break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're continuing our conversation with Nassan Schulman. Uh, Nassan, uh, before the break, we were talking about uh, being willing to work a- in Israel and finding jobs and opportunities. Um, but uh, I also understand that there are organizations that uh, help in placement and finding jobs. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. The organization that helped us make Aliyah was an organization called Nefesh Benefesh, which literally means soul to soul. To soul. Mm. And um, uh, they were the ones that were they were the ones that explained to me the different uh, baskets of goods I get, and they have different departments. One is employment, one is about the healthcare system. They have different advisors on different things that you would want to know. So once we made Aliyah, one of the things that I think they did very well is they have seminars, 
Um, I'd be, they had one seminar, for example, on which health, you know, yeah, I told you there are four competing healthcare systems. Which one do you pick? Which one is best for you? Well, they gave a seminar that was very well done. And I became, I became almost a mini expert after that one seminar. Excellent. And then they had another seminar, uh, how to make a resume. Because Israeli employers are different than American employers. American employer generally wants to see more resume that's more well-rounded, right? More, uh, Israelis more, the, the resume that they want to see is more, what can you do that's specific to this job? They're not as well interested as the well-rounded. So I remember they, uh, on the phone, one of them helped me craft my resume. I remember that night and it was, it was a very stressful situation because I wanted to make sure that I had a good resume. I, a bit of, a bit of a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So, um, then that night I realized I hadn't saved it. So I'm like, oh man, uh, there's no way they're going to give me that kind of time again the next day. Uh, but I'll try anyways, you know, cause they'd given me like an hour or two before on the phone and then oh. they helped me again, do it again. So having a good resume, I've become actually someone that people come to me and ask me about how to make a good resume for an Israeli employer, because like, what do they, you know, and of course it has to be all honest. Everything's honest and stuff, but like there's certain for an Israeli employer, right? They, they're more interested in what you can do for them. Mm. Uh, as opposed to um, things that are less relevant, um, which might be relevant to other countries. So resume seminars, employment seminars, and um, those seminars really, I find, if you take advantage of them, and not everyone does, but anyone who does is going to get something out of it. Yeah, they're, they're there. That's, that's a great um, uh, you know, benefit to, to have. Um, you know, the competition, I'm sure, is quite intense. So uh, any Another advantage, by the way, and this is something that's applicable for uh, – whether you're from the States or Russia or South America um, is that like w with these organizations that help people, like when I would apply for a job, right? I didn't want to ask for something that was too high, a salary too high. Cause oftentimes I'll say, what, what's your salary expectation? And from my experience, they'll, they'll ask you that question here. What's your salary expectation? Um, so I would ask these organizations where, uh, you know, I, I work in paralegal work, for example, what, uh, what should I be asking for? So they would give me a range. And uh, so, I mean, being able to ask those types of questions on what to expect or what they look by people who know what they're talking about gives mm. you uh, an advantage that others don't have. One more thing I'd like to say, by the way, for job seekers is something that most people don't know about. But um, uh, a lot of jobs that don't necessarily need Hebrew are advertised in Hebrew. Mm. So, you know, you get an Israeli employer saying we need someone who speaks only English, American and stuff, but it's written in Hebrew. So all of a sudden... Uh, you know, uh, if you have a job that's being advertised for an English speaker, you're going to have 100 people, you know, you're going to have hundreds of people sending in that resume. But this good job that's being advertised for an English speaker that's being advertised in he in, in Hebrew, nobody knows about it. So I want to say anyone that's watching this that wants to make Elia, maybe use Google Translate. But there are jobs out there that are advertised that are applicable to you, even if it's written in Hebrew. <laughs> That's a good tip. That's good to know. Uh, and and with Google, it's funny, with Google Translate, uh, that opens up the door a, a lot of ways. And it's gone better, by the way, because I've used it too when I uh, often, when I use Google Translate. I, could, I told you my Hebrew is decent enough that I could, but sometimes I'll want to, uh, I'll, I'll take a look. If I ever have to use Google Translate for something deeper, um, I'll read it over first. And I, I find that Google Translate from like take two, three years ago was awful. I think now it's gotten a lot better. And probably by the time, um, you know, by the time this airs, uh, you know, in a couple of days, it'll even be better. Yeah, that's good. So I, 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 my assumption is that you, but your, uh, your focus when it comes to leading tours is on English speaking audience. Yes, I, I'm, 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 all my tours are conducted in English. I have I take people around from all over the world, Switzerland, uh, from the the Ru Russia, but uh, Italy. But yeah, my tours are all conducted. In, I've actually given tours when enough to people that uh, don't speak English, uh, but uh, but it went well. It's just, yeah. and I actually I, I actually like them a lot. I guess it, I guess when you uh, you can't really you can't argue with someone that they you don't speak their language, so it was all really good. <laughs> Well, that's a one advantage, uh, you know, because I know, I know on tours people get tired and sometimes get cranky. Um, that's good. Um, speaking of that, before we go to our, our second break today, um, why don't you tell our audience if they uh, if they wanted to uh, contact you as far as a, as a tour in Israel when things do open up, how would they do that? Guided Tours of Israel dot com. Uh, guided G U I D E D Tours T O U R S of Israel, I-S-R-A-E-L.com. 
and um, the site will do the rest. Very good. Very good. That's good to know. Um, all right. Well, we're going to take a, a, our last break for today. And um, when we come back, Nassan, I'd love to hear about how uh, Olim are helping other Olim, you know, the new immigrants coming to Israel, uh, how they may be uh, assisted by, by those who have been there, done that, and had some experience. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that after the break. Ezra International now has a brand new app. Now you can connect with Ezra like never before. Easily find all partner countries and discover stories behind the real people Ezra helps every day. Access Ezra's 24-7 global TV network and learn all about what it means to make Aliyah. And most importantly, it is now easier and more secure to financially help Ezra fulfill our global mission to rescue, return, and restore the poorest of the poor Jewish people to their homeland of Israel. Download the Ezra app today. Get it now on the App Store and on Google Play. All right, welcome back. Once again, we're talking to Nassan Shulman. And Nassan, uh, before the break, I did a little tease about uh, Olim helping other Olim. Uh, those of you who have come before and experienced Israel for, for a number of years and how maybe you can reach out or have reached out to uh, others and uh, maybe some stories about how they have helped uh, in the process of others getting comfortable with the, the bureaucracy, as you, you mentioned earlier, and other challenges in Israel. One, for the, I guess the first story needs to be about a man named Yehuda Freilich. He is, when I, I mean, I use my words carefully. When I say he's the nicest person in the world, I mean, I mean it. He's the nicest guy in the world. Mm. He, uh, I was his marketing director, actually, for two years, um, from 2014 to 2016. He started a, a a great thing for Olim that was so innovative and it helps everyone. He started a company called Outsourcing to Israel, which um, allows Israel uh, American companies to tap into Americans that live in Israel. So, I mean, let's say, for example, let's say you want to hire you know, a good American worker. Um, so some people will outsource, for example, to India. But if you outsource to India, for example, you'll pay less, but you'll also get a different culture, a different, uh, a different type of quality. But you have a lot of Americans that come to Israel and they're experts in their fields, whether it's in high tech, IT, software, um, graphic design, and they come in, but they don't speak the language, so they have a hard time getting a job. And, but they, but they, uh, they, they want to work. They want to work for an American company and they're willing to work American hours. So you get a good instead of you know so you get an American company that wants to pay instead of paying someone I don't know seventy dollars locally they hire someone remotely that could work from Israel um, that um, you know still paying him fifty bucks but they're getting an American and again you know these are hardworking tax paying Americans because they still pay to the IRS mm. and uh, but the, you're, you're getting an American quality and uh, specifically you're also getting someone that's very who's very idealistic so someone who's willing to uproot his life to go there, you know you're getting a certain type of employee. So outsourcing to Israel, which can be found on Google, is definitely a great resource both for employers and for Americans or even any anyone who has a good skill that can be done remotely. Mm. And I, I wanted, when I was marketing director, I once contacted a bank and they have a team of like, I don't know, 20 people now that, that are in Israel and stuff. And uh, so, you know, it, it, it's called outsourcing to Israel, but it really should be called outsourcing to Americans in Israel. <laughs> um, so that's one company. Another very strong success story is a man named Isaac Levy, a jeweler from South America, from Argentina. He was, I think, a third generation, is, sorry, is, he's uh, still doing very well, mm -hmm. a third generation uh, Argentinian. And uh, he came to Israel at a very, very hard time. and. Um, now he's doing very well. By the way, his company is called Yavel, Y-V-E-L. Why is it called Yavel? That's his name backwards, Levy, because he sold at the time. It's easier now, but at the time he was selling to you know Saudi Arabian royalty. Having the name Levy could be a bit of a liability. Okay. So um, okay. he called it Yavel. And he, he's very strict on hiring immigrants. I think 90% of his employees are immigrants. Good paying jobs, too. He wants to have good paying jobs. Um, I'd say the most inspirational story about him is he started a school for Ethiopian Jews. 
He mm. saw that many Ethiopians that come here had a hard time uh, adapting, and uh, many of them worked uh, more like uh, janitorial or maintenance jobs, and he wanted to give them a, a chance. So he started a school that uh, teaches them for two years jewelry, and in that time they get a stipend, they get an old pun to, to learn Hebrew. They get uh, um, fine. They get babysitting help so that they can uh, train while their kids are uh, taken care of. They get uh, uh, financial planners, everything. And after two years, so these become top jewelers. The, um, this school is now. He doesn't make any money off this. It, he, it, it, it's basically him taking his resources and keeping this, having the school open. Because he wants to get back to Olim. So I mean, this I mean, this is a very strong success story. I mean, it's it's a great. He he he, and now he's opening up in other parts of Israel again, hiring Olim, training them, and paying them very well. So that's a very strong success story. And he has Russians that work for him, Syrian Jews. So that's someone else that. Uh, I'll bet his employees are with him for life. At that rate. I mean, that's oh, oh yeah, that's an incredible way of, uh, of of training and bringing in people that uh, I think would be very very grateful for those opportunities. And he's, and he's been very successful. Look, he's he's done what he look. He's doing. He's trying to help you know his his brothers. He's trying to help his and look. And he's been very you know God's blessed him with a lot of success as well. So he's uh, I mean you have a lot of those types of success stories. You had another woman named uh, Karina. She uh, she was a third generation also from Argentina, chocolatier. She mm. wanted to open up a chocolate plant in Israel in a, in a town of like 200 people in the Golden Heights. Uh, and uh, people are saying, you're nuts. Yeah, you're going to open up in the, in the middle of nowhere. To very successful. Also, a lot of people working there that mm. are, um, you know, very successful chocolate, very good chocolate. I bring my tourists there, for example. It's a great place to visit. And um, But she's another success story of someone who... Uh, who, you know, who started a business? Uh, people told her it wasn't going to work. Yeah. And not only is it not working now, but we're talking about it. You know, it not only is it working, but we're talking about her and so are a, a lot of other people. So these well, are you, the types of. You had me at chocolate. That's right. <laughs> that's that's excellent. And then you take your tour groups there. I think that's another selling feature. Oh, very good. That that's amazing. I mean, that's giving back, uh, you know, and bringing new opportunities and, and work and helping the economy. It's it's a win win all the way around. And that's on a smaller scale, on a big scale, on a smaller scale. For example, one thing that all you need to know about Facebook, right? There are different Facebook groups like called keeping, you know, just putting in the word Olim, typing it in into uh, into the search bar of Facebook. You're going to see different Facebook groups. Where they share jobs and they share uh, the travails they go through, right? Or they have questions about bureaucratic issues they're going through, or maybe they need an attorney or a plumber or something like that, or they need to, they need an electrician. So it's a great resource. So Facebook is something that all Olim, regardless of the language they speak, right? Because there's there's different groups in different languages. Mm. Facebook is definitely a very good tool for Olim, and uh, so is LinkedIn. Very good, very good. It's uh, you know this. This idea of you become, you mentioned a brother, you know, he was helping a brother. That is a very Hebraic, very Israeli uh, concept. I think it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a concept we get from Hashem, right? I mean, it's, Absolutely. We, should, we should understand that, uh, that there, and that's the way life is supposed to be. There's, I'll tell you back to Yavel uh, about the Ethiopian. So there's a man that works there, right? Uh, I can't, uh, his name is Daniel. He's a, he's a major in the, US, in the Israeli army. Um, he came to, uh, he was one of the guys that was helped by Yavel, the jeweler. And uh, he, I mean, he came when he was four years old from Ethiopia. He walked across Ethiopia barefoot with his parents. His sister died along the way. Uh, he had to go through Sudan. He was a refugee. Uh, and uh, today, I mean, today, look, he's a uh, master's degree. He's a successful jeweler there. He's a major in the army. So my tour, I remember once, because that's another place I like to bring the tourists, right? Because it's a very tourist friendly uh, uh jewelry center uh, someone asked him so uh you know how did you learn your english and he says he said uh this is star trek and he, he gives he gives the whole star trek he learned it from star trek <laughs> and uh you know just by his story i felt like such a connection to him like he uh, just come from he came from not he came from a lot of poverty and stuff and i just had to go and give him a hug i gave him a big bear hug it was just uh you know it was very strong brotherhood i felt a very big connection to him and that's really what it, there, there is something to that in israel too it's, it's something that can't be explained to no. uh, those that you know outside probably probably not i mean i know that uh, in the gravest times in israel's history is when uh, you know the, the you have to pull together um but uh you know i i see that 
even though uh, you know the joke about uh, you know um, it, it, you have uh, two Israelis, you have three opinions. I mean that you, of course you're going to have uh, a, a conflict or argument or di a disagreement, but it says really when the when it really matters and when the rubber hits the road. Uh, Israelis pulled together, and I, I think that's a beautiful. Absolutely, thing. nothing nothing brings us together. But um, but you know this. Uh, I'll tell you one thing from my perspective. I, I um, when people say that two, uh, is it uh, two people, three opinions? There's definitely a truth to that. But it's one of those things that I, I, one of those things that's like it's um, it's more it, 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 it's true and it's a stereotype. But at the same time, it's it's it, even the three. I'm in the taxi. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in a taxi ride, for example, and I'm speaking to the driver, and uh, him and I don't agree on anything and stuff, but we still feel a, a certain bond, uh -huh. even if we don't agree. And by the end of that taxi ride, by the way, anyone who's taking an Israeli taxi, you know his, you know who's who he votes for, and you, know, you might even know how much he pays in his mortgage, and he might know how much <laughs> you pay in your mortgage. <laughs> uh, well, you know that's. Uh... It's it's a really a joy, you know. I've I've found that uh, my friendships that I've made in Israel have lasted a lifetime, and uh, you know I think uh, that's a, that's a tribute to uh, uh, not only the the country but the, the people. Obviously, um, it's very uh, strong. It's a very strong uh, lifelong uh, bonds that are very 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 deep. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you know, you all you all of this, Nassan, has just made me long to get back uh, once again. Um, in fact, on that topic, why don't you give your contact information one more time? Uh, if anybody wants to contact you, uh, as uh, you know, whether they're coming to Israel or just learn more about Israel, go to your site. What, what was that site again? Yeah, so my website is Guided Tours of Israel. Uh, dot com guided e uh, g u i d e d tours plural t o u r s of o f israel i s r a e l dot com. You can also call me. I have an American number at three four seven four one zero eight nine three five. On my website, by the way, there's a WhatsApp button. So it's, there's um or you can uh, there's a contact form. So there's many different ways you can contact me, and I'm definitely anyone who needs help or wants to have a really good time in Israel and really experience this country the way it should be. I'm here for you. Excellent. Good job. And I, I look forward to that day when, uh, when I can be there in the land with you, Nassan. I, I mean that one day it's, it's going to happen soon. Uh, and I'm by the way, here, here's an open invitation. We want, we invite when next on your next trip to Israel. We're inviting you for, uh, for dinner one night. Oh, uh, thank you. I accept. <laughs> I look forward to it. Well, Boy, I was a good cook. <laughs> good good and if she's listening it's about that's the right thing to say <laughs> <laughs> that's right but she is a good cook good i'm I, 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 i'm sure she is i'm, I'm joking she's Thank looking you. at me i know i know i can i can feel it all over you <laughs> All right. Well, Nassan, thank you once again i've enjoyed immensely uh spending time with you and i know our audience has as well Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time once again. Good, good. We'll do it again. Well, thank you. That's all the time we have for our program today. I hope you've learned more about life in Israel uh, for, for whether you're uh, an Olim, an aspiring Olim, or whether you're just uh, a, a lover of Israel. I hope this program has meant a lot to you. God bless you. Shalom.